starting with a crossbody strap. Oh, that's right, I can't raise it anymore from there. Okay, good enough. Will I ever start a video out where I actually need it to be? Probably not. Don't ask. Okay, so I am starting with the crossbody strap. I have a canvas fabric that is fused with Woven Fuse 2 from GotInterfacing.com. Hey girl, look at my cup. It's my cup with water. I thought of you. Cause you made it. Okay. So starting with the crossbody strap, four inches wide by 56 inches. I'm gonna start by folding the short ends over about half an inch, hopefully you can see. And then I'm gonna do that to the other end. Okay, disclaimer, I don't know if this is actually my 300th, but it has to be at this point. <laughs> if not like my 700th, but I was actually FaceTiming with my sister and she was like, you should put that it's like your 500th. <laughs> I was like, maybe 300, maybe. Okay, so I got both edges folded over and then I'm folding it in half, long ways the entire way, steaming it as I go. I'm trying to catch up with comments in a minute, but hello and welcome for, welcome for coming. Thank you for joining. Hello to NC. Okay, so I have a fresh bobbin, which is why I'm starting with my crossbody strap. And then after you open it up, you've got that nice center line you can follow to fold in the edges of your strap. I really love the way Woven Fuse 2 feels on straps. Like it's just so crisp and nice. So hopefully you can see, here's my folded over edge and the long edge that I've started. And then we're just gonna repeat that on the other side. Um, it's basically like making bias tape that's one inch wide. There might be faster ways of doing it, but this is the way I've always done it. All right, and then if you want to, you can fold it in half again and iron it, but I don't usually This is the way. Yeah, I love this iron. Um, I would recommend getting the highest one they have because I hate the 10 minute auto shut off that this iron has. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Fingers and keyboard aren't agreeing. All right, so that's about as much. Hey, Casey of the ironing board that I will show you. Yeah, the pink or the yellow. The purple one is really pretty, but that 10 minute auto shut off is so aggravating. Like I'll turn it on when I get started making a bag and by the time I need it, it's shut off again. And I'm like, I realize this is a safety measure, but I can't handle it. So I've got my stitch length set to five. I'm using a size 19 needle and I'm using Tex 92 bonded polyester thread. This is from um, Superior Threads and it is not Superior and I don't like it. <laughs> so I wouldn't suggest Superior Threads, even though I used to. Uh, this red isn't terrible, but I just don't love it. Like I love the Amon thread from Sunny Sony. I'm just gonna go down, folding it over as I go. And then um, when you fold over these ends, you'll have no raw edges showing. 
which is nice. And then you'll pivot. And then this is my favorite side. Because I can just... Hold it in place and sew really fast. Uh, my Juki is the DU1181N. Benjamin is up with CJ. He's got the windows open and Ben can watch his shows. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my one inch slide adjuster and my two one inch snap hooks. Oh, hi Renee. Atlanta is so fun. And I do have a um, tutorial on, like an in-depth tutorial on a crossbody strap if you guys are curious, but you just put it through the center slide and I just do two parallel lines as close as I can to the center bar, back stitching as I go. You really wanna make sure that is secure. So many years ago, I got a complaint from a customer. This was when I just had like a really cheap brother machine. She was like, yeah, so my crossbody strap just fell apart. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, watching his shows, looking out the window. Hardware question mark? Yes. Uh, all the hardware I use is from my website, mormino.com. And then, um, Zipper by the Yard is restocking May 13th at 10 a.m. And it's going to be sold the same way as last time. Six colors per pack, three yards each color. Um, and they're sold by metal color, even though they're nylon. When are we restocking hardware? Um, so I have an order right now. So it'll probably be about three weeks. Uh, zipper ends are being manufactured right now. They're going to be a little bit bigger than the last ones. And that'll be about three weeks too. Um, the rainbow clips that were <laughs> supposed to be here yesterday didn't come. They're coming Monday now. But zippers came yesterday, so that's exciting. All seven boxes. Hi, hello, Andrea's from England. All right, so just doing a box stitch to secure the snap hook. Um, if there is something that's out of stock that you guys desperately need, um, please feel free to email me. I'll check my back stock. I just couldn't believe how quickly things sold out last time and that was a very expensive order. So, ah, saving my money for zippers and hardware. Yes, yes. So yeah, May 13th, zippers restocked. All right, so that's my strap all done. At least my crossbody. So I'm just gonna set that. My iron has, like my ironing board has this really cool shelf underneath that I can set stuff on. So it's where I'll put like in progress things. Okay, I'm using half inch wide, yes, I ship internationally. Half inch wide leather tape from waywack.com or wawak, w-a-w-a-k.com um, for pretty much all my vinyl. If you have a domestic, I wouldn't recommend this. Um, I have seen that people had luck with it and a non-stick needle. But otherwise, your machine might get gummed up with how sticky this tape is. Um, do I prefer the SFS or SF101 over 809? Um, I don't prefer 101 or 809 necessarily. Um, I like Woven Fuse and Decaville Light. So those would be my recommendations. Wow, that's insane. 
Uh, they're called non-stick needles. Literally, just that. Um, I think my friend Cindy sent me a link for that. I could be wrong. But they're on Amazon. You just look up non-stick. No idea what to do with it, but it was pretty. You won't regret it. Um, you definitely do not have to use double-sided tape. And you could use half-inch wide double-sided tape, and that might help you avoid sewing through it. But, yeah, I don't... I don't have a problem. You could try an alcohol wipe on your needle as well to um, help reduce with the stickiness. But I don't know. Woven Fuse 2 is not necessarily thicker, but it is um, more densely. It's hard to explain. It's not quite as. I don't, man, I don't know. Uh, SF 101 is just it doesn't it pales in comparison to woven fuse it's just yeah it's more dense it feels really nice i i honestly can't stand using 101 anymore i have like four bolts on my shelf i used to have way more but i sold some to a friend of mine who was like ah i'll take it <laughs> cool done So yeah, if you guys are interested in trying Woven Fuse, you can go to gotinterfacing.com and use coupon code SOWHATEVER for 3% off, which is awesome because the prices are already better. It's wider than uh, SF101, etc. So, Oh, fingernail polish remover with acetate works for me to get the gummy junk off of my scissors and needles. Good tip, Zoe. Alright, so right now what I'm doing is just folding all of my strap connector rectangles over that double-sided tape. Just prepping it now. May as well. Kind of helps speed things along. Wrong side facing up. Let me know if you guys want to see more of the machine than you're seeing right now. The fresh rolls of double-sided tape are always so sticky on the sides, like, so sticky. So adding a piece of double-sided tape just to the center of the connector. And then grabbing my hardware. Is your knee lift hard to use? No. I don't believe it is. All right. Hello. So I am using one inch simple square rings and then two triangle buckles for the crossbody strap connectors. So I'm just sliding it through. And then for the connector, you don't want to fold it in the middle. You want to give it like a two thirds and a one thirds fold so that when you're sewing through and riveting through, you can add your rivet here and it's not going in the center and like weakening it or anything. So that's how I like to do it. And this is a two inch by four inch piece folded down. Uh, gotinterfacing.com. And I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't know enough about other sewing machines to um, let you guys know. Hi, Fia. Um, if other machines can handle it. I will say that I've had a lot of people use a domestic on the Emily tote without an issue, so... Uh, my Juki is a DU1181N. All right. So there are my strap connectors. I'm going to set those aside. Um, I do not sell handbag kits. I just, there isn't enough time in the day. Because my main business is 
selling handbags. Maybe someday though, when I can't sew as much. Hmm. Hey Crystal, how's it going? So I'm just adding another piece of double-sided tape so when I add it to the bag, it doesn't move around. Would you say the 8700 would be a good industrial starter for making bags and wallets? Um, I do have a video on what industrial is right for you. Um, I was lucky enough to go visit Sewing Gold in Chicago with my friend Tracy and try out a bunch of different machines. Um, if you, uh, it's just really hard to say what machine people could, should get. Um, it's a very expensive decision. So I feel like you just, you gotta do your research and see what would work best for you. The 8700 is a lightweight machine. It does not sew through really thick materials very well. Um, it is not a walking foot machine. So it's not going to handle vinyl unless you get a Teflon foot. And then there is the 8700H. Um, so six layers of fleece and maybe 10 layers of cotton. Um, maybe the 8700H would work well for you. But yeah, I would just do research. Um, Steve from Sewing Gold is great at helping. And then if you are closer to um, the Dallas area, there's also Sunny Sewing Machines. But um, just to throw this out there, I did not purchase my sewing machine from any supplier. I purchased it from Amazon. Um, Sandy, yes, I use a rivet press. Um, handbag hardware kits, uh, I can't put those together because we just have too many different options. So, oh, yay, Donna, thank you so much. The 1541, that's a impressive machine oh very cool oh helena you're so welcome happy to inspire okay so right now i'm just folding my shoulder straps because again I've got a fresh bobbin I know I can get through these without any um, thread running out and by the time I get done with the bag I'm gonna want these to be done too <laughs> hello Alicia Ugh. okay Uh, have I had my machine professionally serviced? No, I have not ever. Uh, I've changed the oil and the belts myself. I have never like opened it up here to really, really clean it out, but probably should at some point. Oh, hi, Jerry. Hope your day gets less stressful. Ben, what are you doing? He's been ignoring me lately. It's fine. Okay. Uh, the glitter vinyl that I'm using is from mypunkbroidery.com. And if you guys watched my cutting and interfacing live from the other day, you know that one roll of their vinyl is like perfect amount for the Emily bag. Oh, get back here. Okay. Stitch length of five if I didn't already say that. Uh -huh. 
Um, for those of you that have the 1181, if you have trouble moving your hand wheel, I actually have the foot lifted while I'm rotating the hand wheel. So if yours is really stiff, that could be why. Uh, Tammy, when I advanced to the industrial machine from a domestic, it was very, very stressful and difficult. Um, it took me probably two months of working with it to finally get everything to where I could easily um, maneuver it. And I messaged my friend Dana a lot crying because um, she had actually some, I think she has vintage industrials, so she had a good amount of knowledge to kind of help me out. So I've tried to upload videos for you guys to reference with the parts that were the trickiest for me. After like five years, I am one with my machine. <laughs> hey, Charisse. Um, yeah, probably stitch length and pressure issue. I have had some twisty, <laughs> twisty straps, but I don't know if I was using a walking foot at that time or not. Sometimes it's how the vinyls cut too, like if it's not on the grain or whatever. I don't know. I don't know a lot about grains, wheats, all that good stuff. <laughs> Hi, Kat. Okay. So the reason my main fabric is wider is because I didn't cut it to the pattern piece. If you guys watched my video, I just get them printed. And sometimes the size varies, but that's okay because I'll just trim it down. Not a big deal. My main panel is the size I need for my accent. That's okay. Juki DU 1181N. Juki DU 1181N. Okay, stitch length four and a half to put together. I don't use that um, machine to make handbags, so I just use Guterman Mara 100, just regular cotton thread to sew zipper pouches. So I'm not sure what it can handle. Yes, I'm using hair clips. They hold things together without leaving marks and they're easy to remove. So I actually sell the rainbow ones on my website. All right, switching it up to a stitch length of five to top stitch. Sew on our strap connectors and add my nameplate. Um, I like the Amon thread from Sunny Sewing Machines, and if you guys ever um, need to know more links after the video is uploaded uploaded there's um a little downward arrow with a description and i include links there so feel free to to check it out all right i'm gonna grab a ruler and my strap connectors just gonna start with two of them for now 
get those placed and then move on. We don't need our triangle rings yet. Just need the regular strap connectors. And I believe it's one and a half inch from the top. Um, can you help me? What is the difference between Woven Fuse and Woven Fuse 2? Um, regular Woven Fuse is dense, but the Woven Fuse 2 is, um, it's just thicker. I don't know, it's really nice. Okay. So one and a half from the top, five inches from the outer edge. One and a half from the top. Inches. Yeah, I would say if you're not sure what the difference is, try both. Get like a yard of each and check them out and see which one you prefer. Um, I find that both are very useful. I enjoy using both very much. Okay, stitch length at 4.5 to sew on these strap connectors. If you have a domestic machine, this might be a little thick for your machine to handle. Um, they do make top stitch needles, which I've heard are a little bit longer. I don't know if that's true, but I could try that. And then I'll add a rivet to the top for extra security. <sighs> Oh, thank you, Angie. Always nice to hear that. How many yards is roll of vinyl from my punk broidery? Um, one roll is like a third of a yard. It's 12 inches. It does say that on the website as well. Okay, Ben's gone. He's looking out the window. There are the strap connectors attached. Hello, Ruth. <laughs> okay. Five inches from the side, one and a half from the top. I think the fastest I've ever made an Emily bag. One, two was in like 45 minutes. <laughs> that was so in real fast. Hi, Emily. <laughs> hey, Cindy. Right. And I'm using this scrap of leather underneath the connector because the Juki walking foot does have Kind of a rough texture to it so it can scratch hardware or vinyl sometimes. There's kids outside. That scared me. Uh, my workspace is in the basement, so like grass is up there. And the houses in my neighborhood are super close together. Okay. So let me add my nameplate really quick before I forget. These are the ones I don't like as much, but I need to use them up. Oh, that's good. You were able to order it in Canada. Yeah, shipping internationally is just expensive, no matter where you're going, unfortunately. Okay, 
say, see you later. Such precise little slits, I don't know where they are. Okay. So let me go ahead and rivet my strap connectors and then I'll add my purse feet, the bottom connectors. Oh, you're welcome, Frankie. Love some waterproof canvas. All right, I need four rivets. One, two, three, four. Four caps. One, two, three, four. So this is the hole punch that I have. Um, so I've been adding rivets to bags for so long that I can just kind of eyeball them out too. <sighs> so post into the bottom. Caps on top. Finally you put my caps on top. Nope. Don't do it. Uh, I prefer my caps on top, post in the bottom cap on top, but either way. Oh, we got no mods. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just ignore weirdos then. We'll ignore the orange door hinges. jig and the zipper template. Such good good tools. Um, um, okay. I think I can add two more. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. All right, so I'm gonna add purse feet. This is my last bit of hardware besides zipper pulls that I need to um, add. And I like to do that one inch from the edges of my Decoville Heavy or Peltex or whatever stabilizer you prefer. And then one in the center. You know what, actually, I think I put purse feet markings on the Emily pattern. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. Power goes to my head. Uh, Crystal, yes, I did take that out. Um, so let me see if I can show you. I was so upset about that too. I was like, really? You're gonna change it and not tell people? Uh, but that's just how terrible Gold Star Tool is, right? So there's this little thing here that you remove. Oh. Uh, you remove the spring comes out so that this is permanently down. And then you just put that thing back in. Put that thing back where it came from. And then 
It's not great, but it works. <clears throat> okay, my slits are made. Duct tape, scissors, purse heat, and switch. Uh, the red poison apple fabric is my own design. Thank you, Tori. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. All right. And then I twist them so that they're a little more tight in there. Uh, did they change it? No, the original one was easier. Uh, the poison apple fabric, um, I believe there might still be some in stock. It's not red, it's gray. I change it up. Um, but I do have fabrics available on my website in the sewing supplies section. You guys can check out. Some of it is discounted. Um, but a lot of my fabrics I keep exclusive to my brand because I want people to buy the bags, you know? You know? Or dresses or kimonos. All right, so I'm adding just duct tape to the bottom to help secure the purse feet and protect my hands from when I'm birthing the bag. Brittany, I think I'm gonna say, um, um, do the dice for June. I'm gonna do a different colorway, that's my plan. So there's no new fabric launching in May, there's too much going on, but June. You talked me into it. <laughs> I haven't decided what colorway, but it's gonna be pretty. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, now that I can stop fidgeting, I'm gonna attach the bottom panel. So you just line up that notch along the bottom edge with your bottom panel. Fits nicely. <laughs> I was gonna say not purple. The funny thing is, no matter what I do, I can't please everybody. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Everyone will like it. Make it pink. No, make it blue. Not purple. <laughs> okay, so sewing that together at a 4.5, and then I'm gonna top stitch it at a five and just fold it down. So you're sewing over that duct tape, your machine might have issues. I apologize. Mine does not. Um, but again, you're just securing that tape even more. Oh, yeah. That was, that was crazy. Like I just woke up one morning, uh, one afternoon, let's be real. And this lady was just like complaining. And I'm like, these videos are free for one. You don't have to pay to access them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ugh. You can't please everyone. <laughs> All right, 4.5 to attach. And you're sewing right next to your stabilizer, not through it or anything like that. Then it'll sit weird. Switch it back to a five. Oh. Oh. Go to your spot. Stop. Get, get, get. Okay. Enter Ben. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. I think the funniest story that I'd ever heard was um, Comic-Con a few years ago in Chicago. This guy was really excited about my stuff and he was taking photos and he was like, oh, my, my mom watches your YouTube channel. She says you're pretty funny or something like that. I was just like, that was great, thank you. Oh, sorry, sir. We're working on a big bag. Ah, uh, Zena. Okay. Better? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so 
So then I'm going to put this together. I've got my nameplate, rivets, strap connectors. Okay. length back to 4.5 half inch seam allowance to sew the bag together Do you say these things out loud when you're not live? I don't actually. I just kind of go with it. My brain just, it's like muscle memory because I've made so many. Okay, sides sewn together. Oh, nice, Tori, that'd be so cute. All right, so I am opening up the bottom seam and clipping. We're gonna sew right next to the stabilizer from stitch line to stitch line. So here to here. Okay, we're gonna flatten that. Ben, you look so bored. Oh yes, he paws at what I'm sewing. Mostly when I'm working on straps or with zippers. That's when he likes to get in the action. need to sew on our side strap connectors and to do that I'm going to open this seam um, Tiffany I have a video all about nameplates for bags you can check out he probably wonders why you talk to yourself yeah like, hmm, my mother's crazy. Maybe I'll sit here so it's like she's talking to me. <laughs> All right, these go on centered over the side seam, one and a half inches from the top. Make sure your um, side seam is laying nice, flat, open, butterfly effect. Stitch length 4.5. We're gonna go across the top. And for these, you can't really add a rivet unless you do it on either side of the seam. Otherwise, you're um, weakening that side seam by putting a rivet through it. So what I like to do is just a box stitch around. So I'll get to the top. And then I'll go at an angle to the other side and then sew across the bottom again and then pivot at an angle to the other side. So now you've got this really strong side connector. Uh, yes, this bag is definitely bigger than the Lauren. Uh, Lori, yes, that is correct. So I usually cut the Decaville to about half an inch smaller so that it's not within my seam allowances making it thicker. 
Um, and that's honestly just to save on Decaville. Doesn't hurt if it's in the entire thing, but Decaville's expensive. <laughs> All right, one and a half. I think I just I bought two full bolts and it was nearly $400. How much does each bag usually cost? Like what does it cost me or how much do I sell them for? <sighs> um, so I sell the Emily bag for 105 that's my standard price and with hardware materials and time well I mean it costs me 105 when you get down to time but I'd say like material cost for the bag um, the roll of vinyl was maybe 15 interfacing probably like ten dollars worth of interfacing um, hardware probably $13, so it all adds up. It's definitely an expensive hobby, but as a business over five years, you know, I've done well. Hey, Judy, you're actually catching the middle. So I just got done with the exterior, but it's time to work on the lining. I really want to try an HD9, the Janome. I think it's Janome HD9. Um, heard some really good things about that one. All right, so now I need to get my zippers prepped. I got my iron warmed up. I'm going to finally make an Emily tote. If you don't make a dice, Emily tote, I'm just gonna be so mad. Crystal, how do you like your HD9? I've heard such good things. I got to play with it once and it was really cool. But I know I don't need one, that's the problem. But I know so many people want recommendations for something that's not really industrial, so. Therein lies my problem. Alright, so I'm adding double-sided tape to the bottom of my slip pocket. The slip pocket in this pattern um, is mostly written for waterproof canvas, but you could use... Oh, hey, Sia. Cassia. Yeah. Need is never the issue. Yeah. The HD8. Alright, so I'm folding up that bottom raw edge. And then I'm going to sew the top edge. Local store had one that the owner had had for a month and it was a great price, but it wasn't in a place where I could, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And <laughs> need and want are definitely two different things. I know I need slash want a Skyver. That's my next purchase. Like, I don't have room for anything else. <laughs> as much as I would love to try different things. So sewing over the entire top. Um, waterproof canvas gets way too thick if you like use two layers. So that's why I only use one for slip pockets. And because it's not gonna fray the edges, you, like you don't, you're not gonna notice. At least I don't. All right, so I'm clipping this in place using my clips and then folding at the notched edges making a nice crease and then I'm um, gonna fold in the center as well and this is creating those crease lines for me to follow for the slip pocket so hopefully yeah you guys can see that so I'm gonna start at the top of one side and just kind of Pac-Man my way around it. So when I get to this fold, I'm gonna pivot, backstitch to reinforce, all the way down. 
pivot so across the bottom now I'm getting to the center fold go up pivot back stitch to reinforce that and then I'm just going to sew right down next to it If you didn't sew down the bottom here, you would have like these weird little lifted up flaps. So what I'm going to do is sew down the side to baste it in place and then sew all the way across the bottom after I changed my bobbin. I knew it would run out soon, but good place to do it. Thank you. Appreciate you. So this is like a half used bobbin, but it'll get me through a little bit of the lining. Okay. So sewing all the way across the bottom. And then if you want to baste it to the side, you totally can, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, it is getting pretty low, but I don't have another red, so it'll it'll work. You don't have that much longer to go. All right, so I'm gonna snip my center at the top, but here we have our two big old slip pockets. Fit lots of stuff. Throw it on the ground. Oh yeah. I'm going to cut my zippers, so I just need like a 10 inch and then something longer than 18 inches. So I'm ironing my zipper by the yard first, just to get out any wrinkles. No wrinkles. So there's one. I'm gonna use my zipper genie, my jig thinger, my bobber, and add my zipper pulls. I have a video showing you guys how I add zipper pulls, so feel free to check that out. And again, links and videos have links to this item, and I will add that to the description box of this video. <clears throat> then I work on my zipper pocket. <laughs> so I'm taking one of my pocket pieces, folding it in half, using my zipper template from Tops and Bobbins, lining up the center of the seven inch, just using a ballpoint pen to mark it out. everything on the ground. We're going to fold this in half in the opposite direction that we folded the zipper piece. I'm going to go ahead and snip my top center right now so I know where to put the zipper panel. And then just kind of eyeball, lay it out a few inches from the top. And then I don't sew a box, I just sew two parallel lines, back stitching, beginning and the end, moving over. If you sew for 17 hours at a time like I used to, um, 
you'll learn to speed so how do you measure zipper by the yard versus zippers you get so with zipper by the yard you do not have a beginning and an end so you need to cut extra um, a lot of patterns nowadays are kind of including what to cut with zipper by the yard what not to but for me I like to cut my zipper way longer not way but like two to three inches longer than the zipper pocket one you want it to be able to be secure in the seam allowance so that it doesn't start to fray and come undone within the pocket like if you're sewing over it it won't um but also i'll show you what i do is i pull the zipper pull fairly close to the end but not too close i'll open up my pocket These are precision snips from Ulta. These are great for like really getting in that corner of a zipper pocket. I remember my first zipper pocket took me an hour and a half, literally. Like I was making a swoon India and I was reading it over and over again. I was just like, I don't get it. <laughs> All right, so I'm turning it through. I'm gonna press it with a lot of steam on my iron. I'll just move it since Ben's cleaning himself. And you just wanna roll it so you don't see any of your lining fabric. And then lots of steam or you'll melt your waterproof canvas. Again, roll that steam so you don't see any of the lining. Lots of steam, don't leave your iron down for too long. You see there's no puckering or anything. Looks nice. Oh, the Devin. Um, so Athena, how do I decide? So right now I'm working on custom orders. Um, and <laughs> it's really funny. Yesterday actually I was sitting here and it was either the Middle Earth Emily that I'd cut out or the Poison Apple one. And I was like, Tammy, tan or red? And she's like, for what? And I was like, just pick a color. And she's like, tan. And I was like, okay, well that, that is what I needed to work on next. So I guess I'll do that. <laughs> but I was like torn on which bag to work on. <laughs> so here I am adding my zipper by the yard into the pocket. So you can see my pull is way down here. It's out of the zipper pocket, but this is right on that edge. So that's good. So you can tape it or hold it. I'm, I've gotten to the point where I can just hold it. And I'm holding it straight. And because that zipper pull is way out of the way, I can easily sew this. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. There you go. So I can start at the top corner of my zipper pocket. And I don't have to worry about my zipper pull being in the way and separating the zipper teeth and it'll sit wonky or anything like that. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball it, lay it nice and straight, hold in place, and then pivot, so across there, pivot again. And again, kind of straighten the pocket and the teeth if need be. So on the bottom. And then now, before I close it up, I'm lifting everything here. Here's my zipper pull. I'm just gonna zip it back through. Oh no, my poison apple is bigger than I'm used to. Ah, it still fits, great. Come on, buddy. Okay, great. And then I'll zip it back a little bit to straighten the end and sew over that. So I have found this to be the easiest and quickest way to do a zipper pocket with zipper by the yard. So I've wasted maybe an inch of zipper by the yard, but if it makes your life easier, is it really a waste? So I'm just gonna trim off that little bit of extra Yay! 
so happy you learned something. All right, so then I'm clipping that together. And I've got my fabric facing up. There we go. So I'm gonna start at the bottom here. And this is my zipper pocket. I'm just gonna fold both pieces up and start sewing through that. This is my birthing pocket. <clears throat> Folding my lining out of the way. Pivoting as I go. And then I'm getting close to this bottom again. So you're gonna fold that. My friend Danielle taught me this. Back stitch. And then we're gonna cut off the excess. And I don't like to cut all the excess off, just kind of at that seam. And then when we straighten this out, hello, Adriana. Oh, Ariadna, Ariadna. I hope I said that right, oh man. Um, I think my chair is good for back issues, but maybe else, somebody else has suggestions. Um, it's got like this really cool lumbar pillow you can move. It's really nice. Lots of support. Ari is okay. Yay! I like that. Sorry, I'm the worst. Okay, so then we're gonna unzip this pocket because we need it open to birth the bag through. So working on the zipper closure now. Ooh, from Brazil, that sounds nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking at the chairs, trying to hit the nerve, get the nerve to hit by. I get it, it's a big investment. Ugh. How do you keep your neck from getting sore while sewing and looking down? Um, having your machine at a good height helps, but my neck still gets sore after hours and hours, but I go to a chiropractor. <laughs> and that helps. <laughs> but yeah, trying to keep your shoulders at a nice posture. It's helpful. Ice it, heat it if you need to. Okay, so I like to tape it all together and fold so they're all the same height. Just because I'm a human and sometimes I don't cut them exactly the same size, at least I fold them to be roughly the same size. Oh my gosh, I know the kawaii chair is so cute. I'm like, that one didn't exist when I bought my pink chair. I bought my pink chair two years ago at C2E2. I was walking around the show floor and I saw them and I was like, gaming chairs don't have to just be for gamers. That one is pink and I want it. <laughs> so I was talking to the guys. It's like, I want it. Oh, Brittany, that's so exciting. How's that heart shaped pillow? Is it nice? Is it, is it just cute or is it nice? <laughs> I want it for cuteness reasons, but I feel like it'd be comfy too. <laughs> okay. So, oh, it's just cute. It's soft. <laughs> Matches my office. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, um, actually, oh, thank you, Kayla. I'm going to take you over to my other machine. I got to switch chairs. There's that jacket I really need to work on. Um, so what I'm going to do, honestly, this is all I've been using this machine for lately because I don't make a lot of zipper pouches right now, is squaring off my zipper by the yard. Oh, you got to be kidding me. 
my thread came loose. So I square off the ends because um, otherwise your zipper pull will just, you know, fall right out. Oh yeah, I have no scissors. Oh, there they are. They're on my chain stitch. Uh, well, dang, now I want that kawaii chair. I know, it's so cute. I'm like, do I need another one? Oh, you use the knee lift, that's so funny. This one does, like, have a knee lift, but I just wouldn't even know what to do with it at this point. I know someone commented on my Throwback Thursday video and was like, well, by now you probably know that's a knee lift. And I was like, thank you. Yes, yes, I do. I like it when people leave helpful comments nicely. Okay. And then you want to make sure that you've squared it off fairly evenly. This isn't a great representation, but I can fix it when I add it to the zipper panel. So that's all for that. Um, it does help to um, make like a little mark as a guide so you know exactly like where to fold it. But this is all I do. Um, that's what it looks like from the other side. And then we'll add a zipper end to the bag when we're done. But you can see now the zipper pull can't come off. And that's that. Probably zoom my camera back out, huh? Might help. Eh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, no, the snip magnets, they're going to be a little bit, probably another two and a half weeks before they actually get here. Alrighty. So now I'm going to line this up about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch from the edge of my zipper panel. And I'm just going to clip my zipper in place. Um, so if your machine is made of metal, I used to sell these cute little magnets that you can put on your machine and you can put your clips on it, you know, kind of helpful. But yeah, I designed some cute ones. One says, let's just sew whatever, because you can't not sing it, right? And then um, the other one is the Not Today Bobbin in rainbow metal. Okay, so you can baste your zipper in place if you want, or you can add your lining now. I'm just gonna add my lining now. Um, can you still get so I don't have the pin cushion, it's sold out, and I don't have the bend on a sewing machine anymore. So I'm doing different designs. I also ordered them as enamel pins, so if you don't want the magnet, you can get the pin. And I ordered 50 magnets, 50 pins of each design. And I'll reorder if need be. Oh, yes. Rainbow everything. Please and thank you. I wish they'd come out with like a rainbow rivet press because I'd be all over it. Why? I don't know. But rainbow everything. Yes, please. Okay. So 
So then I'm going to press this after I turn my gosh darn iron on. 10 minute auto shut off. Press from the outside and then the lining side using lots and lots of steam. So I probably won't move you again when I do the other side. I'll just head over there. And then you can use clips to hold everything in place while you top stitch. Um, I think it's bag stock pattern. She has a really cool way of sewing the zipper panel if you're not a huge fan of this method. it's in her Davina coat pattern. I'm just used to this way, so this is what I do. But I think it would save time because you don't really need to square off your zipper with the way it's sewn together. It's always fun to learn new things. It's always fun to learn new things. Okay, so this was cut I like that. So then, I'm getting it stuck to my finger. I'm lining up one side, the thing from the opposite side, and I'm gonna flip it over. Hey, Francois, how's it going? Hello to Ollie and Angelina. I miss you guys. Glad you're staying safe. together. Uh, the clips I'm using are rainbow hair clips that are going to be available on my website on Monday. And then if your zipper is getting in the way, you can unzip it. Sometimes you include the lining in your zipper top stitch. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so you're referring to like if I were to fold this over and only top stitch through the exterior, not the lining. Um, so let's say if we were working on like a zipper pouch, you would do that because, um, okay. So pretend this is a zipper pouch. So if we top stitched through the lining and the exterior, and then sewed it together, what would happen is you have this really bulky seam at the lining, like if I were to top stitch both of those. So then when you go to turn it, you've got just such a bulky zipper end versus letting it lay flat and only top stitching through your exterior. Ben, I'm gonna remove the zipper from your mouth. Now, can you let go? Can you, oh, that's my hand, thanks. We're gonna turn the zipper, it's fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah, if you guys have a minute, you can watch the, um, the wristlet from Sonar Patterns. I think I kind of go into detail with it there too. But yeah, basically it reduces bulk within the side seam. And you can always iron your lining down to help it stay. I never really have an issue with my lining getting caught in the zipper when I do that method. So if you do, um, another thing you can do is top stitch, like starting half an inch away from the outsides, not on a zipper panel, but on, um, like a zipper pouch or something. You can top stitch starting half an inch away from the outside so that your seam isn't bulky at the zipper panel, at the zipper tape. Words, I'll get them. Uh, no, this fabric is not available. However, I do sell some poison apple fabric. 
Um, I don't know if it'll be returning in June, but maybe, maybe July or something. I don't know. I like carrying fabric, but it is a lot of work and time and we don't always sell it all. So that's frustrating and I just can't do pre-orders. I can't stand them. Finishing off the zipper panel. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Eleanor. All right, so we are about probably 20 minutes from being done with this bag. I would guesstimate. So what I'm gonna do with my zipper panel is fold it in half. I'm gonna take my precision snips. And when I say fold in half, I'm only measuring the zipper panel, not the extra tape. Fling it about. And then I'm gonna add two of these off-brand wonder clips or whatever they're called to the end so that when I'm birthing the bag, etc., my zipper pull doesn't come off. Because while we can get it back on, it's a pain in the patootie. Okay, so I like to start with my lining with the zipper. If you were to zip the zipper, it would face the same direction as this zipper pull. So that's kind of why I like to start here. And I'm just taking my nail and lining up the center snips. So you should have equal fabric on either side. I'll zoom you guys out. I think it's still zoom. Oh, no. Okay. Look at Tammy's question. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. Was that with the Elaine? I don't, I never will understand how. Okay, Tammy. Lauren, I ordered a Brooklyn bag from you. When I ordered it, it said pre order. Um, yes. Was that the SSDGM one? It's going to be about five weeks. Um, pre-orders take some time. I have to get the fabric and then make it. So yes, a pre-ordered item has to be made. Thank you, Trish. And I actually have removed all handbags that are pre-order from my website. So if you guys um, ever wanted to check them out, all that I have right now is ready to ship, which is good. You know, not the totes, but handbags. You figured it out? What did I do? Did I like miss a line something? Probably. I mean, that's the only solution. My friend Carrie enjoys the bag though. She, I think she bought it for like 40 bucks. <laughs> much just sewing with a consistent 4.5 until I get to the top stitch. Okay. Echo. What time is that? The time is 1.36 p.m. Perfect. Happy Thursday. Um, I'm top stitching at 4.5 still, just to kind of keep it consistent. So there's where we're looking at. We got this much off the sides. You measured including tail. Oh my gosh, did I really? That's insane. <laughs> Uh, Kayla, so this one is actually um, a custom order, so it was picked by the person who's going to receive it. Um, but a lot of times I just look at stuff and I liked it. Uh, to be completely honest, I have no idea what the stitch length is, it's just what my machine says. So, sorry, I don't know. That's so funny, Trish. I must have gotten 
real messed up that day on what was happening. Okay. Got that clipped in. So yeah, taking custom orders in person is the most fun for me and probably the only way I really like doing it because um, I can show people all the different materials, talk them through it, say, no, that won't work. Yes, that would work instead of exchanging like 50 million emails. Oh, no, I don't have to adjust tension at all. That's so weird. I mean, it would make sense why you'd have to, though, because different thicknesses, especially for domestic. Oops, sorry, Ben. Probably outside. Am I still zoomed in? Yeah, okay. Okay. Didn't, oh, my thread fell out. Now for that to like never happen and happen to me twice in one day, what the heck? Is it a sign that my bobbin is not enough? I think I'm gonna take that as a sign that my bobbin isn't long enough. Oh, well, it would have been, but it's, it's, I'll call that out. It would have been enough, but whatever. I'm gonna grab me a fresher one, but I cannot top stitch with this. Please remind me not to top stitch. Oh, Ellen, that's so fun. Sherry, what is the time for custom bags? Yeah, so I used to say three weeks, but that's because I didn't have 30 to 40 custom orders at a time. Um, so right now it's been five weeks, especially with fabric taking so long to get here etc so got like five to six weeks honestly okay. oh. you gotta be kidding me bobbin why you gotta why you gotta be like that oh okay well i'm just gonna grab a different one I don't feel like searching for that. So, good thing this one's full. Jeez. Okay. Are we good? Can you stop being so temperamental? Alright, we're good. Yeah, not today, Bob, and I accept it got me today just by acting a fool. I find bobbins to be somewhat relaxing to wind. I don't know why. Okay, so tuck, tuck your zipper end inside. Yeah, so satisfying and simple, I agree. And it's kind of like I said before, like if there's an aspect of bag making you're just not a fan of, try to look at it from a different perspective so it's not like, oh gosh, I hate doing this. I, but that's what I try to do, honestly. Because there are parts I hate, like custom orders. All right, stitch length 
I am starting at a little bit bigger. Cutting and interfacing, ugh, so true. Yes, always have three to four bobbins ready to go. Um, starting my seam allowance a little bit wider than the standard half an inch so that my lining isn't saggy. And then as you get closer to the top, keep that stitch length consistent so that when you put it in the exterior of the bag, you don't have any misalignments. And then I'm just going to leave the bottom of my bag unsewn because I'm gonna pull it through. Oh, what ripped? I'm telling you, it's this darn thread. I need to get a red from Sunny Sewing Machine, but I've been waiting to like run out of this one. It's almost time. I hate to throw away a decent thread, you know, it's still fine. Can you be good? Can you stop? Thank you. <sighs> okay, so lining is going to get turned right side out, unzipped as well. <laughs> Bobbin hates the red thread, clearly. So here is our lining. Oh, my exterior is done. I was like, and now on to the next step. No, the next step is put it all together. What do you get? Bippity boppity boo. Okay, I like to put my zipper pocket on the opposite side as my nameplate. I don't know why. I just, that's what I do. lining inside. Line up your side panels and cork all around the top. We know that it stops. I clip the rest and just kind of just situate all of it together and as you're clipping you want to make sure that your lining and your exterior there's no weird bunching there's no like pulling you don't have to you just want to make sure they fit nicely okay I don't know how else to say because if they don't you you got to readjust something you messed up somewhere So it looks good, no weird bunching, no weird gaps. Gaps is the word I was looking for. Then I'm just gonna add more clips. Okay. Stitch length, 4.5, and I'm gonna sew around the inside. when I'm doing this, I like to basically just set my foot next to um, the lining. You can kind of see the lining here. I just set my foot next to that and sew all the way around the top. Making sure your clips aren't moving or shifting. Your lining isn't separating from your exterior. And then I like to backstitch over that butterfly seam. Okay, things are shifting, so I gotta rearrange. Why did Where Are You Christmas just pop into my head? <laughs> Where are you 
Christmas. Anywho. <laughs> That's not funny. Okay. If you've got to readjust, make sure you leave your needle down. Uh, my red vinyl is interfaced only on the bottom panel with Decaville Heavy. You might be seeing the duct tape. Sarah's house was watching that this is Anne. <clears throat> okay, so these are invisible magnets that you can purchase off of eBay or Amazon. And these are enamel pins that are turned into magnets and I'll have some more in a few weeks. Okay, time to turn this bag right side out. So this method is from Angela. There's no interfacing here. You could add interfacing if you wanted to. All right, pulling the lining out, we've got this big opening here, so it should be quick and painless. I grab, I taco the bottom of the bag first, pull that through. <laughs> and then grab the other taco end. and then push out the corners that you tacoed. And then before anything else, just kind of check your top seam, make sure your side seams aren't coming undone, everything looks consistent, um, no extra threads. And then what we're gonna do is, we've got our pocket we left open, I'm gonna pull that through. And grab the bottom of our lining. So this is what's left open. My hand is in that zipper pocket. Grab that. <laughs> I love the taco expression. I mean, it's taco or hamburger, right? They pulled it. Okay, so then I'm just pulling that through. And you can absolutely berth your bag through the zipper pocket. However, it is a smaller pocket. You risk um, messing up the zipper pocket in some way or you risk the teeth of your zipper harming your bag. I've had that happen so I find this method very helpful. Even though the first time I saw it I was like, that's so much extra work. Why would you do that? But it's really handy. <laughs> All right. So you can see here, there's the side I've already sewn. This is my bottom lining. So what I like to do is line that up. I don't worry about clipping the entire bottom together because I know it's gonna line up. Start at a half inch, back stitch. And then while it's here, I'm pulling the layers together. And just kind of maneuvering it slowly. Okay, so now my bottom is all sewn, but we still have to corner, box the corners. So we're just gonna bring those side seams together. Butterfly them open and clip. Okay. Yeah, glitter vinyl is quite heavy. And also the waterproof canvas that I'm using is going to add some interfacing as well. Um, however, you could definitely use uh, some interfacing on the vinyl if you prefer. 
there are some vinyls I use that I'm like, yeah, we gotta interface this. Okay. Got the bottom sewn up on one side. And then we're opening up the other. Make sure all your threads are not sitting inside. And you can trim down your seam allowances as you go if you want, or you can wait till the end, whatever. I don't even know if I usually trim these down because they kind of act as more um, stabilization, like a spine within the seam, having that extra fabric. So it's just totally personal preference. <clears throat> And this is why we sewed our slip pocket the way we did, because the bottom of the bag is squared um, and your pockets would sit kind of funny within the side of the bag if you didn't sew them off. I prefer my canvas lining bags with glitter vinyl without extra stabilizer. Emily, do you even know what you're saying? <laughs> God bless you. I don't think you have any glitter vinyl bags. And then just to reiterate, that was not my idea. Angela Trenholm, I believe. She is the um, designer at... Oh. She did the triple C wallet. I know I just talked about it in my um, Belle V, Bella V bags. Something like that. I'm pretty sure. Credit where credit is due. My friend Kylie told me about it and yeah. Okay. So now I can sew my zipper pocket shut. I want to go and make an Emily bag now. So fun. Okay, sewing up the zipper pocket, throwing in a name tag. Need to insert it with a clip. Just find it sits nicely. And the Emily bag is inspired by the Emily who's watching right now as well. Was it difficult to find fabric suppliers, zippers, etc.? Um, I really like the zippers from My Handmade Space, um, and I do sell zipper by the yard now, um, just as packs here and there. Um, and I really like my own. I'm like, ugh, I'm so sorry. Uh, this one is just red glitter vinyl from My Punk Broidery. You look under the glitter vinyl. Um, so the difference is these give a light hold that I can very easily brush off. And these have a very strong hold and I have to unclip them to remove them. You can't just brush them off. So when you need a stronger hold, you use the stronger wonder clips. And when you don't need the strong hold, use the other ones. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And it took me a while to find hardware I liked, but again, I also sell it now. So everything that I sell, I use. There's nothing right now that I can think of that I sell that I do not use. Except grommets and wallet frames, but most of those are um, discontinued. <laughs> Discontinuing. And yeah, just as a reminder, Zipper by the Yard is being restocked May 13th, and the colors this time are so pretty. So I do like to change it up. So, yes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So now we're ready to top stitch. Here's what it looks like inside. Got my zipper pocket here, my slip pockets. Awesomely chonky, yes. Give that chonk. All right, I didn't need to say that. 
So this part here may be too thick for domestic machines, but um, I also have that issue sometimes on my machine where it is too thick. So I'll take these clamps. These are stained glass breaking tools or something, key fob. Um, but you can just really, really gently like squeeze, compress the fabric together and that helps. You can also use a hammer if you, or like a wooden mallet or something, but I find that that helps in case you needed that helpful hint. Anyway, okay, 4.5 stitch length. You can bump it up to five if you want. I'm just gonna leave it at 4.5 because that's what I did most of the bag with. And then I like to start on the back of the bag, my top stitching, and work my way around the front. Make sure you're holding on to your zipper or your um, thread end so they don't get knotted up. And watch out for your zipper end. And then it's always easier to walk up the hill than run up the hill. Unless you're actually exercising. Ew. But just go slow around the outside, around the outside. And you are sewing through that top accent piece and it creates a really nice lip on the fabric or on the bag. And then as you're lifting up to readjust, make sure your needle is down, your zipper is out of the way. Okay, walk up the hill, don't run. breaking clips left and right. Getting back to where I started. Yeah, so this bag is a custom order. If you guys want to place a custom order, you can email me, but it's gonna be several weeks before I respond. I still have some people from January I need to get to, but her bag sounds complicated. So that's another reason. Okay, you're broken. You're not. Oh, you're my bobbin. You are my bobbin. My janked up bobbin you made me angry. I guess you'll say. Okay. So yeah, now we're ready to add the straps and the zipper end. I'm probably gonna do the zipper end off camera just cause I have to get up and go get it. I forgot to put it in the package. My little hardware kit thing. But there is the zipper panel. When zipped, you can see fits pretty darn well. So um, you can make it crossbody only, um, or I don't know. There's tons of options within the pattern. I think there's like a total of three different way ways to make the bag within the pattern. So it's great for beginners, etc. Oh yeah. God, I love Pursuit. <laughs> When did I last do a leather project? Is that what you mean, Emily? Oh. Um, so I actually, I need to work on one. 
won't do it today. So probably tomorrow. I'll show you guys what I have cut out and ready to go. Um, probably won't go live tomorrow because one of my friends who works for me uses my phone to take pictures. And she's working. Um, so I left a really long zipper so that I could top stitch easily. I'm going to cut it off and add a zipper end. Um, so I'm going to let this bag chill for a minute. I'll show you guys what I'm working on, but this needs, the handles are going to get riveted and then the zipper end will get attached, but she's all done. Okay. All right, let me flip it. Okay, so these are two Mighty Messenger bags that I have custom ordered, um, that have been custom ordered. So this is the leather, and this is the fabric that it's gonna be. I'm really excited. So this is my leather project that I have coming up. There's the flap, gorgeous. Okay. And then this is another um, Mighty Messenger. And those are the last two custom orders that I have cut and ready to go. Um, yes, I designed that fabric too. Um, and then this is one, this is my like in progress area. Um, this Mighty Messenger and Devin, this is not a custom order. I was just like, Tammy, cut this out. It's going to be amazing. So it's lime green vinyl and teal lining fabric. It's going to be really cool together. Um, and then my last three custom orders that I need to cut out is a My Favorite Murder mini backpack. I'm trying to hide customer information. Um, this is a custom order Brooklyn travel bag with purple vinyl. And then this one is an Alias Investigations Davina tote. I'm really excited for that. Um, but this one was a custom order and this is actually the ladies cats. So I'm excited for that. And the purple vinyl is from my punk broidery as well. So yeah, that's it for me today. Um, so usually I don't do custom orders where people provide the fabrics just because I don't know what it feels like. I don't know how it needs to be interfaced, etc. So maybe you can email me and I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, that's it for us. What do you wanna do, Ben? What should we do? What do you wanna do? <laughs> Take it out. Then go play with your ghost. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, I will right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Ben, can you say bye? Ben. Can you say bye? Those are the weakest meows I've ever heard. <laughs> Rude. <laughs>